Man, dear. Who broke that? I believe that is a a casualty from the zero grazing and the dung grab. And it was not me. So, I don't know if you can see behind me, it is uh, not a very good day. It is cold, wet, and it's damp, and not a fun day to try and make a video. Uh, currently in the beef house, thought today, to be honest, I've been struggling to actually get videos made. There's been that much going on between here and in work. This morning, I had a TB test, so the cattle was all brought back in to the house, and I'm not for putting them back out. If I put them back out after the day, and come Thursday, it'll just be a nightmare trying to get them back in again. So not really wanting to open a pit of silage to feed them, so we're doing a bit of zero grazing. I want to say zero grazing, My form of zero grazing at the minute is take more out, mow down a few strips and use a dung fork on the Merlot. Uh, push her up in the pile and bring her in. Basically by myself fittering at it, it's the easiest way for me at the minute uh, to bring grass into the cows. I have a double chop sitting around the corner which I could use. Hasn't been out in a while, there's a couple of wee things needing touched up on her. Don't have the time for all I'm needing, not going to bother starting into her. The thing about the, the dung grab, you're not chopping it, you're bringing it in as long as it is. When it's like that there, it seems to last longer. If the chop stuff, you know, you leave it, it'll heat after one, two days, it starts to heat. Whereas that stuff, I'll get away three days with it. The Merlot and dung grab works well uh, when the grass is longer. This stuff, it's quite short, it's out of a grazing field. She wouldn't just Cleaning the field the same, you would leave the scattering behind, you know, she just doesn't sweep it up nice. The longer stuff, you know, sort of brings it all all with it. But for all you're losing, really, if the cattle was thrown out on it, what they would be tramping, it's not too bad. Uh, all other thing with the dung fork, you have to be careful going along. If you don't have her just tilted just right, next minute you're scoping into the ground, ripping up bits of soil. You don't really want that. You have her up too high, you're missing the stuff's falling behind you. It's a handy enough way when it's beside the yard. I uh, wouldn't really want to be having to go too far. The amount of grabs you're bringing in, bits and pieces falling off the grab too. Not maybe ideal. Started doing that probably a couple of years ago. We'd always have cattle in over the summer. And sometimes you get a five in, sometimes you give 20. And this way it's a bit time intensive. Like every other day you go out and want to drop and bring it in. If Dad's getting about, he normally can, if I have it mode, he'll foot or drop under the cows. If I was using the double chop or the self-propelled harvester to bring a load in and feed them to, the other thing is, by the time, while they're setting the trailer off, backfill, can still manage myself. Come into the yard, tip it up, still then have to put sheer grab or whatever on, or bucket, and take it round all the cattle. So it's taking me slightly longer gathering the grass up in the field, uh, using the Merlot and Dungfort. But then it means when I'm bringing it straight in, I'm feeding the cattle as I go. So overall, I'm probably not that much worse off in time. Like I said, that fact that the field is beside the R does make a, a big difference. But when you can just bring it straight in with the grab and feed the pens accordingly, you have to put whatever feed you're putting out, you're having to put out to them anyway. So, you know, it really is sort of your mowing and your lifting that adds a wee bit extra time. But 
overall it's not too bad. One of the biggest factors with the zero grazing at the minute, like we had a real good spell of weather, now even with a wet day, the ground's in great nick, so it's, it's dead on. You get a wet spell, zero grazing just turns into a headache, especially when you're using a Merlot with three wheels, weighs must be nearly six ton, ball tires on her, you don't need you don't need the grief of having to go out and trying to do it that way. If it comes in wetter and I still want to do it, probably I'm going to use the, the harvester instead. Merlot's not a field machine in wet conditions. Like I say, even with the rain, the ground isn't good nick, as long as it stays like that. But a week's rain could make things chancy for the Merlot too. Also, you're bringing in wet grass. I'm going to skip her more on it. Fresh grass anyway too, like they're always going to be thinner than dung, but you bring in that wet stuff. Like last week when I was zero grazing, you're pushing up the stuff, it was nearly like hay, you know, it was that well wilted. The dung would have been that bit firmer, you know, it was the fresh stuff, so I started eating it. You know, it's just that like, wet green grass. It's the skitters flying out of it. Dairy boys have been at zero grazing. Don't think it really justifies a beef man to do that entirely. Like I say, it's only for a handful of cows, but you do get every blade of grass you know you're maximizing what grass you're getting off the land the regrowth coming again but it's more just for the fact of a hunt that these cattle will be in for a couple of days and that's the only reason so we had a good bee spell of weather uh this morning obviously or this afternoon it's not so good out there neighbor had made hay got it baled in great condition so i ended up buying a few bales off him neighbor arrived in actually left the trailer off he was looking the trailer back again I was flapping about all their stuff. He came back to the, left the trailer and then ended up helping me shift it into the shed too. Should have had it into the shed dry. Fluttering all their things, my head was a mess. Should have been getting that into the dry first. But they're stacked out now, loosely. So any of it's a wet dump. He's not really taking much harm. It's in the round bale they got, you know, the rain's not doing it. A big deal of harm from the stack they got. You know, it'll dry out for a day or two and then it'll stack it up proper in the shed. Basically like to have a wee bit of hay about just for even them days it doesn't sit to do a bit of zero grazing if I'm beat. You have hay if you have a single cow in, pull a bit off and you're having to open a whole bale and it wasting for one cow. Wanted to make hay myself this year, there was a spell to do it. I was behind the times and missed it. It's just as handy really buying a drop off the neighbour. Uh, and keep me going for whatever I need. Normally it's me out and about or calling in to some machinery yard and come home with something and then I get in the baller for what the flip you bought that for, we don't need that. The dung grab actually, it was Isle Tam. He was out one day and spotted it and that was his purchase. And actually it was a wee bit annoyed at him. But for a change, it's normally the other way around. I was like, we have no need for that. It turns out we do use that quite a lot. Uh, and I think she actually was in around the 600 pound mark. So for what she is, she wasn't actually that dear. Although she was very straight when we got her, and now there's the odd wee, wee bend and twist. I don't think that's just meant to be sitting in like that. I think the only thing we had to do with her was the burst pipe. And that was only bother to, to really give. I don't even know how that there got bent, but for six hundred pound, she was right in heavy duty. Well, we can break heavy duty stuff. I couldn't really be too sore on the old boy for buying it. 